Chapter 14, Forgetting the Constitution. Haruko Obata lived in a house in lovely tree-shaded Berkeley, California. Her father was a professor at the University of California. Haruko was an American citizen. Like most Japanese Americans, she was proud of her Asian heritage, but she didn't approve of the ways of the warlords who ruled the Japanese empire. In school, she studied the constitution and its guarantees. She was happy to live in the land of liberty. Then one day, Haruko's world changed. Her father came home and told the family they were moving. They had just a few days to get ready. They could only take as much as they could carry. They might never see the things they would leave behind. They were going to live against their wishes in a prison-like camp. The Japanese internment camps on the West Coast and the internment camps for Jews in Oswego, New York, were run by the same government agencies. Even the food was the same. Families sent to relocation centers could take only what they could carry. What had they done? Just a minute and I'll get to that. But first, imagine that you're Haruko. You have to make some hard decisions and you need to make them quickly. What will you choose to take with you? Sorry, your dog can't go. You have to give her away. Books, games, toys, not if they're heavy. No one knows exactly where this camp is. It may be very cold or hot. You won't be able to, to take much besides clothes. Your parents must sell the car, the house, and all their possessions because they, because they do it quickly. They will get hardly anything for them. You and your family are going to a camp that's surrounded by barbed wire fences. Armed guards stand in watchtowers. If someone tries to walk out of the desert, he will be shot. What have you done that's so terrible? Why are you and your family in this prison camp? You have not done anything wrong. Yes, you read that right. The Abados have done nothing at all. They have been fine citizens but they are of Japanese descent and the United States is at war with Japan. There is anti-Japanese hysteria in America, especially in California. Some of it's understandable. War is terrible. The Japanese government is horrible, but the Japanese in America have nothing to do with that. Some people don't understand that. Many authorities expect the Japanese to attack the West Coast. A Japanese submarine fires shells that land harmlessly near Los Angeles. People are terrified. There are rumors that Japanese American fishermen are sending signals to Japanese ships and planes. There's no evidence for this, but in wartime, how can anyone be sure? Hysteria is a state of violent, emotional agitation and uncontrollable fear. Reports of Japanese atrocities in Nanking, China and elsewhere are horrible and turn out to be true, but Japanese Americans have nothing to do with that. Just as some German Americans have nothing to do with the savagery in Nazi Germany. Most Japanese Americans feel anguish. They love the United States, its opportunities, and its inspiring vision. But they also take pride in their ancient Japanese heritage. For them, World War II is like a civil war. In addition, the Japanese in America face an old problem, racism. A racist law prevents Japanese immigrants from becoming citizens. However, anyone that's born here is automatically an American citizen. Two thirds of the Japanese Americans are Nitsi, the Japanese word for those born in America, and they are citizens. The war brings out very real fear, and the racists use that against the Japanese. There's something else here too. It's greed. Japanese Americans have been industrious. Their property is valuable. If they're put behind barbed wire, their property will have to be sold. 
and quickly for much less than it's worth. Some people will profit mightily. The first calls for internment, putting the Japanese in camps, came from newspaper columnists. Then a group of West Coast politicians join in. They include Earl Warren, who will later become Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The Attorney General reminds the Secretary of War that the Fourth Amendment protects citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures. The 14th Amendment says, nor shall any state deprive a person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. But we are at war, and the War Department is worried about national security. The right of habeas corpus has been shelved in wartime before. Habeas corpus, which is a Latin phrase that means have the body, is the right of anyone who is arrested to be brought before a judge and and to make the arresting officer show that there's a good enough reason for the rest. Because of habeas corpus, you cannot be held in jail without being accused of a crime. That is a very important right. In many countries today, people still get thrown in jail for no good reason. All right, President Roosevelt issues Executive Order 9102. 100 and 20,000, 120,000 Japanese Americans have a few days to get ready. They will be sent to 10 different internment camps. There is much more to this story, much, much more. Mostly it is of the people who, as soon as they got settled, didn't cry. They did their best in a bad situation. They planted seeds and grew crops. They raised farm animals, they fed themselves, and sent their surplus to support the war efforts. They fixed up their sleeping quarters, they established schools, churches, recreational centers, newspapers, scout troops, baseball teams, and their own camp governments. Some were let out of the camps to work in factories. Many became soldiers. A Nitsi regiment fighting in Europe won more commendations than any other regiment in the whole United States Army. Infantry Harry Takagi explains, we were fighting for the rights of all Japanese Americans. We set out, for, out to break every record in the Army. If we failed, it would reflect discredit on all Japanese Americans. We could not let that happen. More than 16,000 Nitsi served in the Pacific, most in military intelligence work as interpreters. Some went behind enemy lines as American spies. Japanese American women volunteered and served in the Women's Army Corps and Army nurses and in the Red Cross. In the course of the war, 10 people were convicted of spying for Japan. All were white. Only one Japanese American was convicted of treason. She was Iva Ikuda Togori, a graduate of UCLA who was in Tokyo when the war began and couldn't get home. Togori, known as Tokyo Rose, agreed to do propaganda broadcasting to avoid work in a munitions factory. She was played, paid $6.60 a month. At first, people in the War Department objected to the idea of Nietzsche serving in the Army, but finally President Roosevelt spoke up, and he said, The principle on which this country was founded, and by which it has always been governed, is that Americanism is a matter of mind and heart. Americanism is not, and never was, a matter of race or ancestry. Eventually, the camps were closed and people went out and did their best to build new lives. It wasn't easy. They had lost all their possessions. Many still faced racism when they tried to get jobs and new homes. Forty years after the end of the war, the American government officially apologizes to the Japanese Americans for the terrible injustice done to them during World War II. Those who had been 
in those camps were giving money in partial payment for their suffering. We call that reparations. Today, when Americans think back on internment camps, we feel shame. Thousands of interned Japanese Americans volunteered to serve in war factories and in the United States military force. The 442nd Regiment Regimental Combat Team became the most decorated regiment in United States military.